Good morning. morning. We welcome you on this week before Thanksgiving when we as a nation look to what God has blessed us with. So we hope that you have safe plans as well as uh, plans with family. Uh, Be safe in the sense of following some of the protocols as well too. Today we're looking at Christ the King Sunday and we're going to look at how Jesus invites us um, to follow him. But also what does it mean that he is our shepherd king? And we'll hear about that, especially in our gospel lesson. Why do we do good in the world? And so we'll hear that as well, too, in our sermon. But with that said, we welcome you. If you're looking for a church home and you're watching by screen, please join us every Sunday um, on screen or also here at church. We have worship at 10 and at 10.15 as well. So um, this Wednesday evening at 7, we will be having our uh, Thanksgiving Eve service. So we invite you to come and worship as we uh, look forward to the day of Thanksgiving. With that said, let us rise and sing our opening hymn. O God of God, O light of light. God placed his name on us in baptism, so we place our name again over us in our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving, for the Lord is the great God. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Indeed, our Heavenly Father has called us to be his people. He has led us to green pastures and still waters 
And yet, there have been times when we have treated our fellow sheep with disdain, when we have wandered away from our shepherd, but our good shepherd does not abandon us, and we confess our sin before him and one another. Heavenly Father, we confess that we have wandered away from you. We confess that we have acted shamefully toward our brothers and sisters in Christ. <clears throat> we have sinned in thoughts, words, and actions. We have failed by our inactivity. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, O Lord, that we might follow you to the green pastures and still waters of everlasting life. Our Heavenly Father has heard your confession and sent his only Son, Jesus, to be our Good Shepherd. Jesus searches for each one of his sheep. He brings back those who have strayed. He binds up the injured. He even lays down his life for the sheep. By Christ's death and resurrection, God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are sought by our shepherd. We are forgiven in Christ. Please be seated. One of uh, the things I like to do is a children's sermon, but um, just because we can't come up, we, we'll, we'll, we'll invite children to come up at another time. But if you were to go backpacking or hiking, you would know that there are several things that you need to do. One is you need to pack things, right? Whether the weather is cold or hot, you need to pack accordingly, clothes-wise. You also need to pack food as well, too, especially if you're going to go hiking overnight. When you go backpacking, one of these things doesn't work, does it? No, they don't. But uh, we, we talk about backpacking and we talk about walking, but... You know, we may want to consider when we talk about our life in following Jesus as a walk. Scripture refers to that in regards to walking with Jesus. And it's important for us that when we follow Jesus, we recognize that he is the one who is leading us. That's sometimes difficult, isn't it? Especially when we talk about the theme in our opening confession and absolution about being sheep and a shepherd. We are God's people the sheep of his pasture. And I imagine there's a reason why God uses that, because sheep like to wander. And in life, we can choose our own path. The problem is, is that if you don't have a map and you don't know where you're going, you'll get lost. And in the process of getting lost, you'll find yourself in danger. But our Lord leads us. And so when we live our life, when we walk by faith, it requires us to see where our Lord is leading us. And so as we live in this life and we walk in this life, let us always walk close to the Good Shepherd and hear His words. And in hearing His words, He will lead us to those green pastures. Amen. Today we invite you to read along with our scripture lessons found in our bulletin. Picking up this theme of the Shepherd King, we hear again the Old Testament prophet speak about the Shepherd that God will provide. And we hear these words from Ezekiel 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among the sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all the places where they go and have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their gazing land there they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, 
And I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. And I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak sheep and the fat, and the strong I will destroy, and I will feed them in justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture? that you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture and drink of clean water, that you must muddy the rest of the water with your feet? And must my sheep eat what is, have been tr trotted, trotted, trotted with your feet and drink what you have muddied with your feet? Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder and thrust at all the weak with your horns till you have scattered them abroad. I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey. I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them, and he shall feed them and be their shepherd and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord, and I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Our second reading for today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep for as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be come made alive, <clears throat> but each in his own order. Christ the firstborn, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom of God to the God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when, I say, when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is expected Accepting, accepted, who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him, who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be in all, in all. This is the word of the Lord. Be Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. We sing the Alleluia. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel for today comes from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations. And he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry? and feed you, or thirsty, and give you drink? 
And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you in, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick and in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers and sisters, you did to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me. You cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and all his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me in. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you. Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Our hymn of the day... Forgive us, Lord, for selfish thanks and praise. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you turn with me to our gospel lesson there for a moment, and we're lo looking at those words um, here that Jesus says in verse 40, and the king will answer, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did to me. Amen. Let us begin with prayer, shall we? We pray. 
Heavenly Father, we come before you today and we pray, Lord, that you would be with us to hear your message and your words to us and that in our lives we may love others above all and serve them. We ask all this in your name. Amen. The famous Russian author and writer Leo Tolstoy wrote a famous work about an old shoemaker named Martin. Martin was an older gentleman, and one day while he was reading his Bible in the evening light, he fell asleep, and he was startled by a voice that said to him, Martin, Martin, I'm coming to visit you tomorrow. Well, he woke up with excitement, and he thought, this is Jesus speaking to me, and so Jesus will come to visit me. And so in the morning, he woke up, and he went to work. As he got to his shop there, he saw this figure in rags, and he thought, maybe this is Jesus. And as he put his hand on the shoulder of the man, the man turned around, and he recognized him as the old veteran who begged on the corner. One-legged, he needed a shoe repaired. And so Martin fixed his shoe and gave him some food and set him on his way. A little later, there was the door at the shop opening, and Martin saw that it wasn't Jesus, but it was a young mother with a child, and the child was crying. And the child said, I'm hungry, Mom, I'm hungry, Mom. And so Martin took some of the bread from his lunch and gave it to the child, fixed the woman's shoes, and sent her on his, her way. A little later, he noticed there was a boy at the door of the shop crying, and he wondered how he could help this boy, and he opened the door, and he found out the boy had wandered down an unfamiliar street, and so Martin pointed out where he could go to get home, and the boy was thankful. A little bit later, there was a woman who had two shoes that needed to be repaired, an older woman who couldn't walk so well, and he fixed her shoes, and by evening, Martin realized that it didn't seem that Jesus would come and visit him. And so he put his glasses on and he opened his Bible and he read those words from Matthew chapter 25. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Looking down at the pages, he read those words. And as surely I say, as much as you've done this to the least of my brothers and sisters, you've done to me. Martin then understood that the vision in which he had had come true, and that Jesus, his Savior, had come to him and visited him that day in those people that he helped. Without recognizing it, Jesus was there. That story of Martin by Leo Tolstoy helps to convey for us our scripture text, especially as we see Martin recognize the opportunities of seeing Jesus in the people that we serve. Looking at our gospel lesson, we see that there are two groups of people, and both of these groups do things. One neglects helping the poor, the other helps and serves those in their presence, and yet both of them don't recognize that it is Jesus. And with that, we hear those words of judgment and salvation from the gospel of Matthew saying, the king says to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance of the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. And then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and all his angels. These texts kind of convey to us that how we treat others reveals our eternal destiny. It brings a different perspective in the Gospels, doesn't it? It shows us that if we are to be good toward others, it's not just people that we serve, but it's Jesus. Both of these groups in our Gospel text didn't see Jesus in the poor and those they helped, the imprisoned and the naked, but yet Jesus was present there for them. One group to judgment, one to salvation. There's something to observe as we read this text. And it might seem to be saying in our gospel text that good works will determine if you're saved or not. 
I want to make that clear because it seems to be going against the very statement of faith when we say, for by grace you have, for you have been saved by grace. For it is by grace you have been saved. This parable seems to be saying that works are attributed to our salvation and our reward. That's misunderstanding. It doesn't say that. How then are we to understand good works and God's grace? Let me read to you those familiar and famous words from Paul's letter to the Ephesians and listen to how he speaks about good works. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmen, handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Do you see how good works are presented here by Paul? As Christians, we are saved by grace, but grace is never without good works. It means that we live in grace and we are given opportunities to share with others. James, if you're familiar with his text, he says, faith without works is dead. What James is saying about is, you may say you have faith and I may say that I have works, but show me your faith apart from the good works you do, and it will be impossible to do. You see, as Christians, faith is never apart from the good that we do. The good that we do is because we have been saved by grace, and in turn, it's, we do it to Jesus. In other words, we do good for people because we are God's children. We are saved by grace, and then in turn, it causes us to do good toward others. You see, how we treat others really reveals our eternal destiny, but it also reveals to us the relationship that we have with Jesus. Notice in the scripture text, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. So here's a test. When you see another person in need, do you treat them as if they were Jesus? Some may argue that this this parable is really geared toward Jewish people, that Jesus isn't talking about strangers outside the family of faith. But I don't think that's true. I think really this text is speaking about what God wants for the kingdom of heaven and the reign of Christ in our life and what it will mean toward eternity. You see, if we listen to Jesus' words there in the Sermon on the Mount, what does he say about our enemies? He says, love those who persecute you. Again, as well, too, you may remember the parable of the Good Samaritan, about the man who was robbed, and yet uh, two religious people walk by, and yet a Samaritan comes and brings him and takes care of him. That parable actually is in the context of a discussion that Jesus has with a lawyer. And the lawyer wants to make sure that he fulfills all of the commandments rightly. And for him, his world is really that of a small center of Jewish life. And that's how he sees fulfilling God's commandment. But then Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. And the young lawyer says, then tell me, who is my neighbor? And Jesus then tells the parable of the Good Samaritan. Samaritans were outcasts. They were people from the other side of the tracks. They were seen by Jewish people as being polluted and being far from them. They were seen as apostates. They were falsely living religion, and so the Jews wanted nothing to do with them. And Jesus then shows this lawyer that the question of who your neighbor is is not one that you can get around. You can't say, I will be good to those that I love and like, and to those I do not, then I will cast them aside. See, the parable teaches us how we are to live as Christ reigns within our hearts. Just listen to his words from 1 John. 
We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his sister or brother, he is a liar. I mean, listen to the impact of John's words. See, it's the content and it's the way we live that shows if we love God or not. If anyone who does not love his brother or sister whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this commandment, whoever loves God must also love his brother and his sister. See, it's the fruits of faith that will show if we are those that are receiving the gift of salvation versus those that are not. It will be evident in the work that we do toward others. It's important for us to hear those words because the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry? When did we feed you? When did we see you thirsty or give you a drink? When did we let you in as a stranger? And Jesus then will respond, when you did this to the least of my brothers and sisters. See, it ultimately is the condition of the heart. I don't know if you realize that, but we are all selfish by nature, all enemies of God. This is exactly what Paul says in second chapter of Ephesians. But we have been saved by grace. While we were dead in our trespasses, God, who is rich in mercy, was making us alive. By the grace of God are we saved. Maybe if we were to look at the parable of the good shepherd. We would see then the promise that Ezekiel spoke to the people through the voice of God, that God would send a shepherd, a shepherd David, to rule his people. That is Jesus Christ. I mean, when we wander and when we are selfish, does not the good shepherd call us back in his grace to live again a new life. That's what we do in worship when we confess our sins to God. God begins anew in us. There was a Sunday school teacher who wanted to reaffirm her children on what it meant to love your neighbor and even your enemies. She had asked each of her children to draw a picture of the bully that they had in their class the people in their life they did not like. And so the children went to drawing these great pictures. She put them on the bulletin board, and then she gave them each a dart to throw at the picture of their enemy. With joy, they threw pictures at their enemies. The Sunday school teacher then went to the board, the bull, bull, bulletin board, and removed the picture. And behind the picture, there was Jesus. See, the intent of the heart is how we treat people is really the question of how we treat Jesus. Because if we treat others as how we would treat Jesus, then we would see how we are living. Do you consciously treat people the same way that you would treat Jesus? Or are you throwing darts at him? See, God will not forget our works. And he will show us our works at the end of time. That's something that's quite clear, but as we stay close to the Good Shepherd who reigns in our hearts, then we will find more and more that He changes and molds us to be as He wants us to be. You can't hear the gospel and not be changed. If you receive me, you receive my Father. See, the ultimate thing really is, is that how we treat Jesus and others is how Jesus will treat us. See, it's so clear to what he says. And they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. It's an incentive, a motive maybe, to look at our lives and to ask the question, are we following the voice of the good shepherd who leads us? Just think of these words. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. They listen to my voice and I know them and they will follow me. See, as children of God, we follow the voice of the Good Shepherd who speaks to us through his word and points us to eternal life and keeps us in the fold. The promise that God intended through this parable is to assure us that we are the righteous because we listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd. To those that you come across in your life, like Martin the Shoemaker, 
May you always live in mind of the fact that they are Jesus with masks, and behind them is your Savior. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise. We will be skipping the creed for today, but we will be going to our prayers. In our prayers, we want to pray especially for our community. As we know, um, the virus um, is amongst us and, and people are recovering. We also want to pray for those that have been afflicted by it. We also want to pray for those that lead our nation. Um, at every level of government, people are challenged, politically as well as personally, when they make decisions. And so we ask that God would give them guidance during these times of, of uncertainty. But also, we want to give thanks to God. I'm reminded of when I used to go to Concordia here in Austin, um, there is a building that was a Texas dining hall, and, and there was a plaque that said there, we thank you for the gracious gifts that farmers gave um, during times of drought. And so the college was blessed even during those times of drought. And so even when times are difficult, we must be reminded of the fact that God still provides good things for us in everything that he gives to us. So even when we face danger and, and hardship, he gives to us all things. And so this season of Thanksgiving, may it be an opportunity for us to look at everything he gives us. We pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. You are the God who richly blesses us with so much, more than we could ever count or know. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of life that you have given to us, especially as we freely come here to worship you, we pray, Lord, for the church around the earth, that you may raise up for us voices of, good, of people who call others to follow the good shepherd. Lord, we pray for the church as it is persecuted in places like China and Africa and in other places. We pray for Christians and pastors that are in prison just because they follow your voice. We ask that they may be bold in their profession of faith and confess you boldly. We pray, Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray also for those that lead this nation. We are aware, Lord, that we live in a season of politics. And we pray that you would be with us to not hear voices that try to call us away. May we be faithful in the callings that you have given to us and be good citizens. We pray for leaders that they may make the right choices for the benefit of many. We pray for those that are dealing with the COVID-19 virus. We pray, Lord, also for those that have found themselves out of work and underemployed. We pray, Lord, also for those that have been blessed with much to give and share during this season. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of daily bread, for the food we eat and the bounty that we will receive with friends and family this week. May you keep us safe as we travel here and there, and that we may always give thanks for everything you've given to us. Lord, we thank you that you bless us with good things. We pray for those listed in our bulletin that are in need of healing and strength. We pray for the Barrett family, Lord, that you would be with them and give them strength. For Al, Bob, and Kathy, be with Bob, we pray, as he is in a, in a memory care facility. We pray for da their daughter, Donna, who is dealing with cancer. We pray for Cullen as well, Lord, that you'd be with him as he recovers from his battle with cancer. We pray for Gilbert, and Francis. We thank you, Lord, that Francis is home now. We ask that you give her strength. Be with Pam, Richard, Alton, Anne, Reggie, Larry, and Evelyn, Trish, Doris, Jean, Connie, Priscilla. We pray, Lord, for Bailey Cox as well, the Kunkel family, for Donna Reinhardt, and for those that serve in our military, for Anthony Toops, for Tyler Kunkel, and for the Nimsch family. Lord, we pray for all of these things as you bless and give to us all good things. Continually, may we hear your voice as you call us as our shepherd. We ask all this and pray boldly the prayer our Lord taught us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we will sing together our offertory found in our bulletin as we receive our offerings. begin our service of communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is our duty and our delight at all times and in all places to give thanks to you. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, now do we praise you that you did send to us your only begotten Son, and that in him being found in human form, you did manifest the fullness of your glory, through whom with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you for your great majesty. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you, this do in remembrance of me. And also after supper, he also took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed also for you for the remission of sins. This do also in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please be seated. We sing verses 1, 2, and 3 of our distribution hymn.
body, now let us take and drink and receive his blood. May this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in the true faith to life eternal. Depart in peace, amen. We will sing verses 4 and 5 of our distribution hymn with our utensils for communion or kick back. Receiving these gifts, let us rise and sing in thanksgiving. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Come seek the Lord, rejoice and proudly. We pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have graced us with your presence in this sacrament, and we pray that you would keep us in the one true faith until life everlasting when we enter into the joy of our Master. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Receive these blessings as we go forth in our week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending him, Lord of glory, you have brought us.
Please be seated. On behalf of our congregation, we'd like to welcome you all, especially those that are watching today. Um, just to let you know, again, Wednesday is our uh, Thanksgiving Eve service. We invite you to come as we begin the season of uh, um, Thanksgiving this week. Uh, also, too, we want you to be aware um, that we are still studying the book of Ecclesiastes. And so one of the ways we've been looking at the book of Ecclesiastes is to look at life backwards. And so I won't tell you what that means unless you come to the class. But uh, we've been recording the classes, and hopefully we'll have them up on our website soon so you can, you can listen to it. Um, but we're having some fun with that. Um, again, um, if anything in the service or the sermon as well should inspire or make you think in some way, please share that with me. I would enjoy seeing that. And then also, too, please reach out to those that you may not have seen here um, in worship. Uh, remember, we're trying to uh, include those people in our worship who have not uh, been here, but we want to have them be connected. And so one of the ways of doing that is if they're friends of yours, please contact them or let us know if in some way we can serve them. As you know, um, not having people here and have people not here, uh, it's made it difficult as a pastor to try, to try to know what's going on. So if you hear of something, please let me know and uh, we'll keep that uh, respectively, but we'll also be able to, to minister to them as well too. So with that said, uh, have a great week. Thank you. 